You ever hear the expression, kire oboeru? What? I asked, startled to hear the Japanese. It's an old samurai saying that means strike down your enemy and learn. I shook my head. Doesn't sound familiar. Sukahara Bokudan, Ito Utasai, Miyamoto Musashi. All famous samurai in their day. We're talking 500 years ago now. I think I read a comic about Musashi once. Damn kids. Wouldn't know Bokudan from Batman, Feral sighed in exasperation. And there I was, pure-blooded Japanese, and he knew more about my country's history than I did. Samurai were warriors who earned their living fighting, just like you and me. How many people do you think the samurai I just named killed in their lifetimes? I don't know. If their names are still around after 500 years, maybe 10 or 20? Not even close. The records from back then are sketchy, but the number is somewhere between three and 500 each. They didn't have guns. They didn't have bombs. Every single man they killed, they cut down in hand to fucking hand combat. I'd say that'd be enough to warrant a medal or two. How'd they do it? Send one man to the great beyond each week, then do the same for 10 years. You'll have your 500. That's why they're known as master swordsmen. They didn't kill once and call it a day. They kept going and they got better. Tell me when you wake up. What? Come find me when you wake up. What's up guys? It's me, I'm back, and I've finally done a face reveal. I guess it's not really that <laughs> impressive since I'm pretty- in this book. The main character in this book, his name is Keiji Kiriaya, and in the movies, his name is Cage, right? And each, in the book and the movie, Cage and Kiriaya are both so used to the resets at some one point in time that each line from every person becomes just NPC dialogue from video games. And <laughs> that's the point to which they get in which they have to fight and fight and fight 
the same battle every single day of for like I think 159 days in this book and they get better and better they go from rookie soldiers to masters of war and death and that's what really makes this concept interesting it's that Cage isn't like a he's not an interesting character like he's a very bland character at, at first he's just a typical soldier but I think that's what makes him that's what makes this con that's what makes this concept work especially in this book he's not a he's not like the best character in the world but like he's ordinary and that's the point he just gets better and better and better with training and practice and practice and he gets good to the point of which he can kill mimics left and right when one of them deals hundreds of thousands of deaths to soldiers on the field of battle and i think that's what makes all you need is kill so unique it's the story of an ordinary dude <laughs> it's such an amazing book and such an amazing movie but they they do have their differences and i'll get to that in a bit but first let me talk about the plot of the book so in the book, Keiji Kiriaya, uh, he's an ordinary soldier at first, and he's fighting on this island, and he dies on this battlefield against an army of mimics. And mimics are aliens that invaded the Earth a while, a while back, and they've been killing and they've been like winning almost all the battles. Right? It's really hard to kill one. They're like in the book, they're like blobs, alien creatures that shoot spikes that are so fast they rip through soldiers, and. Kiraya is just a normal soldier who's probably doesn't he does he probably doesn't want to be out there. He just will, goes into the war because it's it's not really explained why he goes into the war in this book. It's kind of thought of as he's just ended up on the wrong side of the coin. He he's like out of place in battle, and yet he still fights. He still fights for his country like any other good soldier. And unfortunately, that gets him killed. Like he dies really quickly in the battle or he gets fatally injured really quickly in the battle in his first iteration. But then the interesting part is when a war hero comes and she defends him for a bit, if not, well, not like out of grace or out of sympathy or anything like that. No, she only defends him to take his battery, his suit's battery, and refill her ammo. <laughs> and it might seem cruel at first, but he gets this connection with this warrior who seems so carefree and not, not her head doesn't seem in the battle. Like, every other soldier out in the field is soiling themselves, but she's so calm and composed, and she's so ready to fight and kill and do whatever it takes. She, her name is Rita, and in the movies and in the book, they call her the Full Metal Bitch. <laughs> it's not a good name, but it's a very derogatory name, but another good name for her is Valkyrie. And the reason why is because she's this war hero that's given hope to people around the world in both the book and the movie and they kept the book and the movie pretty similar for Rita like character wise in the sense that she's just this American girl who's done so much to fight and kill and make herself build up her image as one of the greatest warriors of all time and people don't believe believe the story sometimes they're all skeptical like any other people are about legends and myths and people who are like one man armies but She's the real deal. That's what they show. And Cage realizes this really quickly in the book. I'm just going to call him Cage in the book. It might seem very racist, but I just, I don't want to butcher his actual Japanese name. So Cage in the book is re understands that after his first reset, when his day repeats when he dies, after Rita uh, protects him, right? Actually, before I get into that, let me explain how he dies first. So he dies in the book and in the movie by killing a very specific mimic and this mimic in the movies it's a bit different but in the book it's part of a network and killing that and killing this mimic set off the network and disrupted it and cage infiltrated the network of mimics so he became part of their cycle and the mimics use time to win their wars to learn and to learn the enemy's attacks and to fight and to win so cage becomes part of that system and he quickly realizes this and he quickly fights and practices and practices and practices. He practices with Farrell in the books, who's actually a really cool guy in the books and compared to the movies. And he learns how to fight. He watches Rita. And throughout the book, he watches Rita and he grows, slowly grows a connection with her over the days. But the sad part is that every day he 
she dies and no no one remembers him like he only he's the only guy that's gonna remember what happens every day and then the day resets anyways when he dies and then he has to relive it all over again and it's a sad and it's a lonely existence where everyone becomes the same for him everyone has the same dialogue no one becomes different there's no spice i guess you could say in his life uh, that's not a good term to describe it but it's kind of like isolationism when you deal with the same thing day in day out it's monotonous but he you respect his resolve you respect cage's resolve to fight and to win no matter the cost no matter how many times he dies no matter how many times he suffers and it's one of the and between the movie and the book it's a really cool thing to see both cage in the movie and cage in the book just keep going at it no matter what happens to them <sighs> yeah <laughs> All right, I'm gonna get into some of the differences in the movie. Okay, the movie really hollow Hollywoodized Cage, I guess. I don't even know if that's a term, but I'm just gonna make it one right now. Cage in the movie is a very American dude, and I actually like Cage's arc in the movie a lot. And I like, that's also because I like Tom Cruise a lot, right? Where Cage is Tom Cruise, and they show Tom Cruise as a coward at first. But in the movie, K Tom Cruise becomes like a, a hero who hates what he used to, he used to be and especially when he's confronting the general in that one scene it's a it's a good moment it's a good character moment right compared to cage in the book he's kind of more bland but if cage in the book has more of a relationship with rita and in the movie it's more about the plot itself rather than his relationship with rita although they do touch on that really well so yeah another big difference is that the movie has a very different ending than the book and I don't, I don't know how to describe it without getting into spoilers, but I'll just say it like this. In the movie, there's a more, there's more finality to the ending in the movie than there is in the book. In the book, it's, it's more left to, um, it's more, the conflict is still going on in the book. Well, in the movie, it's resolved, let's just say that. And I actually... It's, I have a hard time tr like uh, choosing between which ending I like better. I like the movie's ending because it's a full circle ending and it works really well with the movie's story and the movie's system of mimics because the movie's system of mimic, mi sorry, the movie's system of mimics is really different from the book's system of mimics. In the sense that the movie's mimics are also like structurally very different too, but the movie has like a kind of, <laughs> I don't want to say cheap, but it's it's really cheap because now a lot of Hollywood alien movies do this where they have an alpha or like some king or queen that if you kill that, then you win the war and you don't have to deal with the rest of the army. It used to be unique, like in Ender's Game, it was unique around that time, but now it's not. <laughs> so, I mean, they do it well in the movie, don't get me wrong. Like, it's a very well done concept in the movie and it makes sense. It's just overplayed a lot in a lot of Hollywood movies nowadays, but... In the book, it's a more realistic ending, I'd say, in the book. And it, the book really explores the theme more than the movie. And that's why I think the book ending has more theme finality than perhaps the movie does. Although the movie's ending leaves, like... <laughs> the movie's ending makes you want a sequel so much. Oh my god, I am so happy that they're making an Edge of Tomorrow 2. Despite, like, the book ending where it does and the movie ending where it does. Like the movie, you don't have to make it to, but like, I am so happy they are because this story is one that needs to be explored and it needs to be watched. Like, people don't talk about Edge of Tomorrow enough, man. <laughs> I mean, honestly, and all you need is kill as well. Like both of these things, I think it's just their marketing was bad at the time of release. Like, look at this cover. Now, all you need is kill. Even like, I know it's pretty far away, but this cover, it's, <laughs> I'm not I'm gonna I'm gonna be very brutal here. It's not the best cover in the world, right? It doesn't tell you much. It's very bland and it's monotone and drab colors are almost make the picture hard to understand at first. But then you like once you realize that he's in a suit, it's still kind of blurry and messy. It's gritty and it represents the book well, but I don't think it's like the best cover you could have come up with. Same with the movie. The live die repeat thing, and especially the name of the movie, where it was changed so much like its name is such a controversy i remember at first it was gonna be called like live die repeat and then it was called to like the much better edge of tomorrow but now i think it's like edge of tomorrow live die repeat that's like the full name i don't know the specifics of it but it's bad <laughs> right the marketing for the movie i don't think was good at all it was very i mean like okay some some trailers were actually really good but there are some trailers that made it seem like just a typical um bog standard action hollywood movie 
And they never really delved into the concept of Groundhog Day as much in the movie trailers as they should have, because I think that's the main takeaway or the main hook that you get from the movie and in the book. And both of these concepts are used so well. I just wish more people would watch Edge of Tomorrow and all you need is kill them. I mean, honestly, you, if you guys haven't watched this or at least read this, watch it and read it. Trust me, it's such a great experience to watch the movie and read the book because they're so different, but they're both so good at the same time that you'll get, if you, if you like the book, I'm gonna say this, if you like the book, you're gonna like the movie and vice versa. Cause both of them are so good and both of them are so unique. If you like action, if you like aliens, if you like time, if you like drama, if you like rom just like slight romance, not really. And if you like addictive reads, this is an addictive read and movie is an addictive watch. Watch Edge of Tomorrow, please. That, that, that's all I'm gonna say. I'm not gonna spoil anything. Thank you for your time. <laughs>